This is the chair's introduction. This is about this is the I need to just read out what's going on this evening. So this is about chair's introduction to physical meetings at Crossway Church. Thank you to all members of the public, councillors and officers who are joining us today at today's meeting. Please be aware that the council is video recorded this meeting and this will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. I would just like to highlight some key points for the meeting format. Please can I ask everyone to have the phones turned off or set to silent. The fire exits are clearly marked for the primary exit being through the main entrance. In the event of a fire, the lift should not be used. The council team will help anyone who needs assistance exiting the building. The assembly point is on the forecourt of HSBC next to Tesco's Express Store. Please remain seated unless you're invited to speak or need to take a comfort break. The toilets are out in the corridor opposite the main entrance door that you've entered through. The toilets are that way. Members of the public are invited to participate in the meeting with key points as follows. When the public participation session is introduced, please raise your hand. And I'm just going to add here, do not put your hand down until the chair has acknowledged that they've seen your hand, please. To show you wish to speak, and I will invite you to speak. If you are comfortable standing, please do so to ensure you can be heard across the room. Public participation is limited to a maximum of four minutes per person. You do not need to state your name when you start speaking, if you do not wish to, but we ask that you clearly state which agenda item you are speaking about. I would ask that participants looking to leave the meeting wait until the end of the agenda item to limit distractions for other participants. To all present, please remember to show respect to others in the meeting and avoid interrupting where possible to enable others to follow the meeting. If any councillor feels concerned about any aspect of the meeting or discussion, please clearly state point of order. I will then gesture for you to elaborate. <coughs> If anyone present is felt to be behaving unacceptably, they can be ejected from the meeting by resolution. Thank you for listening. On behalf of the council, I would like to thank everyone for attending this town council meeting. Agenda item number one, apologies for absence, please. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everybody. We've got three apologies this evening. Councillor Jim Law is the person of the moment. Councillor Laura Everton has a work commitment. And Councillor Richard Hunnigan has a pre-arranged meeting. Disclosure of interests. To deal with any disclosure by members of any disclosable pecuniary interest, an interest other than pecuniary interest, as defined under the Deeper Town Council Code of Conduct and the Localism Act 2011 in relation to matters on the agenda. Yeah. Um, I, I did item number five. I, I have a non, non um, pecuniary interest. I'm a member of the new discussion. Methods of committee and, and we're meeting on one day to discuss the application. Yeah. So I'm moving the room. Okay. Um, I've got the same reason, I'm sitting on the South Committee, and I'm going to have to lower Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. um, sorry, I'll be very clear in the room. Okay, thank you. Councillor Butler? Um, I have a display of interest, one is number five. I've written a, a letter of firm objection into the licensing committee because I'm a resident in uh, Beach Coast now, and so it looks the source, and I know the problems of noise and things there, so I have already objected to this to the licensing department. Thank you. Thank you, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Still with any questions or re-representation from members of the public in accordance with relevant legislation and see the town council policy. We're taking public items under the agenda items four and five when we get there. So there's only anything else. Then on to agenda under item number four. Which is the Seaford Cricket Club, sort of proposal at the source. So, agenda over item number four is to seek full council approval for Seaford Cricket Club to erect an additional storage unit on the source. Okay. 
we have um, we are going to suspend standing orders 3D, which will allow public speakers outside to be able to speak. So please can I have a composer? Thank you. And seconder. And Councillor Brown. And then all in favour. Thank you, Chair. Standing orders are suspended. Right, I now invite any member of the public who would wish to speak on this matter. Do we do it now? Yes. Can I come clear? Yeah, yeah. I'll approach the jury. My name is Philip Brown. Thank you very much indeed for inviting us to see the councillors and officers. Uh, we read the report from uh, the, the website and uh, very, very much appreciative of the work that's gone into it. An excellent summary of uh, both our requests, aims, uh, and proposals. Um, in terms of the request, I think it's fairly clear from the exposition of the uh, case for the storage and also for the change. Um, our plea, in a way, is that if uh, those two things are taken together, they are going to combine. Uh, the change of rooms which are very old, the nine play here in 1979, and they are exactly the same as they were then, and they're a little bit antinomian to describe it so. And we have proposed that in failure to raise the money to build the planned approved uh, new building, that we take over the release of the existing chain agreements, and under our own financial um, funding, uh, we revent, we <coughs> refurbish them. Um, and the refurbishment will include an accessible, but not a, not a wheelchair accessible toilet um, within the confines of the existing phase. But in order to be able to do that, we need to move the equipment, which is very cramped surface, and into a storage area. And obviously, work out that the consequence of getting the beat on the changing room is that we can get our equipment into another storage area. So, the, the two uh, proposals um, are combined. And could I urge, if it is passed this evening, if they are passed this evening, that the two conditions upon which uh, councillors have uh, insisted, requested, uh, be it first of all the permission, I think, from the Ministers of Council that the land is disposed of under the coming to Chief of Town Council, who can then negotiate a lease for the purposes of uh, leasing back to us, terms of which we have not agreed, um, or even conditions. <laughs> um, but I guess they're going to be similar to, the, to that which you're currently um, sorry, which at the moment um, conditions our tendency of the change in the show. The importance of the club of the lease is that we will be unable to go being unable to go to financiers or fundraising people without a confirmed tenancy agreement. For example, we go to one of the week, the O'Hare or something like that, or in ECB, the critical one, we would be unlikely to be approved without that firm um, condition of uh, tenancy. So I would urge if you uh, if in a mood to pass this, that all speed is taken following the meeting of the approval uh, to give us permission to crack on with this. Our cricket season starts in one month's time. We can't possibly do anything to refer to changes within that time frame. More likely to be at the end of the season, which is October. But we could start the process by building under, I think, our own finances. He owns the treasurer, by the way. Um, we could finance the building of the story and get the place cleared out in order to be able to fill out the building. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, so that, that, we didn't have any comments. Oh, sorry, I meant to say that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll see you next week. We'll do this one. Can we have some more questions? Do you know which item in the venue you're going to speak about tonight? Hello, well, good evening and welcome. Who oh, else? Yes. No, he is not going to speak. He's not going to speak. He's not going to speak. You're very welcome. Well. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So we, we, we can do this bit now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councillors, if you have any questions and see.
Gans can ask any questions since he explains his from the interested parties. So now is the time if you want to ask interested parties any question. Now is the time while suspended. This is standard orders to be suspended. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my only reservation about this particular uh, motion is that the building is uh, being made constructed of wood. Um, we know that there's been several break-ins down on the uh, cricket club uh, premises in the past and robberies, and I'm a bit worried about security of the building. It's just made for it. My only consideration. Would you like to just say anything about that? Yeah. Yeah, we. Um, we already have installed some security uh, for the clubhouse and where we currently store the equipment and we would also extend that security out to the new facility. Um, there is, of course, as you know, the CCTV cameras that, uh, that patrol um, and that, that's the best we can do, to, to be honest. You're right, every now and again there are some um, incidents. Um, fortunately, the clubhouse has never suffered a serious break in. Um, the club, uh, the changing rooms get some damage uh, because there is that little alcove where people like to gather and meet. But we would do everything to uh, prevent that happening. Um, and we do think a wooden base building would, would lend itself better to the effort of the source. Any other questions, Councillor? <coughs> uh, just, just a point. Who's there? Oh, just wait. Get out of the chair. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, you've got the, the, the um, storage unit separated from the, from the actual changing rooms. Would it not be much sense, more sense to actually abut them so somebody can get in between them and push them over? Well, um, I don't think so, to be honest, but just, uh, from, from the footpath, which is not almost evident, um, there are water pipes and electric cables um, running towards the changing rooms, and to abut them would mean things ah, are right. some of those to some yeah. extent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other counter? Thank you, This is probably more for questions from members, um, for um, the, 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 the speaker, but I'll ask the question now. 2.5, um, as far as the proposed lease, um, the club will allow Premier of Soccer to continue the occasional news. My concern is obviously this, this would be a long lease, it could be a, a, any, any other, what about any, along any other reasonable news. And see how we can identify this first of all. I, I do think it's important to encourage football and young people to use that, to use the salt. And anything that does like that will discourage them from being used by any other groups. You now having access to a changing room, um, we, 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 we need to bear that in mind. And therefore, for example, that the, the crouch, uh, the window of the crouch, um, it, it isn't being used as much as it can, because the changing room is, is belongs to the football club. And I don't want this to happen again at the salt, where the changing room is, a, is a, more or less a suit of use by the cricket club, and no, any, any organisation cannot use it again. Is there anything you can do about that? Can I? Can I yeah, yeah, we, we, you know, in talking to Tony, who's now in goal, Tony Jackson, we fully expect, if we get this lease permission, that somewhere in that lease, we as a cricket club would have to give access to anyone else who wants to use that football facility. Yeah, and that's only right for reasonable. Yeah, we, but we would take over the lease of the changing rooms and make sure that they've kept clean and, you know, support the other, the other users there. If that's the case, that, that, that differs um, with, with respect, Chair. That differs from what's in 2.5. So I don't know if that can be amended either with a motion. But I would like it to be in writing that, that, that what, 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 what the gentleman has said is, is vital. No. So I don't think he put that in motion somehow. I think we've heard that from the and we will make sure that the lease negotiations reflect your comments this evening. Okay, thank you. Councillor Dunn. I'm going to wait till the Sankt Moss has been stated. We're just doing questions. Oh, okay, then I'll wait till the Sankt Moss has been stated. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. That was kind of a question, Sankt, that was Yeah. 
There always used to be um, the, the school ball um, championship of the year when um, something that, is that is that still going on anymore? Does that still happen? It takes place, I think, one day in August. Yeah, it's just one day, but it was a very, very busy day. I remember it was a, yeah, it's a particularly unique Sussex um, game. But so, part of our heritage, and obviously, it just had it in the We're not sure of the uh, date. No, no, we're going to discuss with our 100 Any further questions to the two gentlemen that the councillors want to ask? Okay. Right, we're going to now reinstate standing orders, um, ending the chance of public speaking. So, can I have a proposal, please? And a seconder. And all in favour? Thank you. Right, any councillors who want to speak on this? The council Yes, thank you. Madam Mayor, it's page 7, 3.15, the grant of the public consultation. Uh, C says there's a suggestion to consider a green group in the design to complement and provide diversity work in the area. I really would like that absolutely considered. I think it's an excellent idea, um, for, especially the fact that we are trying so hard to combat the environmental issues. I'd like to say hopefully the officers can really take that on board in negotiations with the group. Thank you. Any further questions, councillors? I just wanted to chair um, the design of the building. Does this have to go to the planning um, committee as well to do with the design uh, of what it will? I mean, I take on board Councillor Brown's point about what's constructed. Well, personally, I feel it's up to the cricket club within reason what they've constructed. Or if it gets further down, that's their problem and they are insured for it. So I'm sure they'll take whatever action they need. But I think from the point of view of what it looks like, and I'm, I'm sure the wooden building will be fine. I do take the council to answer point that a green roof would be very nice too. But uh, does this get run past the planning committee? No, it's 3.9 in the report. Okay, so the planning commission will not be needed for this item to work out. Councilor Gordon, here, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not sure why I need a green roof, but it does say that it does not require, the storage does not require any utilities at all. No water, no electricity, nothing. So why would you put a green roof on something that requires no additional power and then so there's only reason you have seen the report. There was a suggestion from the consultation, but but it also says because they don't require any power or water at green line. Oh, okay. A green roof would be required on building that does not require any oh, okay. so, so I don't know. I, yeah. I really understand and accept that we do want to make areas more sustainable and more and diverse. diverse, but I'm not sure where the storage unit is the required thing. Um, also, the fact we understand as a council the costs that have been escalating in redevelopments and things, and we've made the change of Martello toilets to incorporate the charges. So I can really understand why they're now proposing, we're kind of proposing to lease the changing rooms rather than building their own one. So, obviously, with uh, Councillor Adonigi's comments regarding the additional um, usage for other groups um, across the whole year, I'm actually fully supportive of uh, this application. Councillor Payne was that you haven't spoken yet. Um, just to support the green roof is, is part of the facility. The green roof is part of the top, it's not. Um, some panels or anything, so so it just parts and such a seagull. 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 It's called seagull. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> that was my point, thank you. <laughs> Alright, thank you. Any further questions? <clears throat> Comments? Councillor? I would just say the, the cricket club is an essential and very active 
um, the discipline in everything going on in the sorts of the summer. I think we should get behind this completely and give them all the support they need. Does that count to that the This will be subject to full council's subsequent agreement of the final terms of lease for the change room and the land to be used to house the storage facility and receiving written permission from those district council to dispose of this land by way of lease. I'll be happy to take all those items together. Can I just say, I'm just asking, is the lease coming back to full council to agree? Because we have had issues with leases on the parks. What about that? Okay. I'm going to, uh, we'll follow our, our standing orders and financial rates in relation to that. Uh, in terms of these are having to come through for council and then agreed, so the answer to that question is our, our regulation requirement. Thank you. So we're happy to take it. So we have a proposer and we have a seconder. Is Conducive 
to the playground area. And it's not just the playground, it's the exercise area, it's combat play area, it's the base, it's the um, skateboard, and the people in the park. We don't want alcohol, we don't want music, we don't want late over. It's already a problem with, um, we get lots of kids with um, shopping trolleys, with alcohol in the trolleys from Morrison's, coming onto the park. The next morning, you've got all the rubbish, the broken glass. I don't think this is a suitable venue for alcohol. And the people that have benefited are only going to be always at the cafe. <coughs> people surrounding it. Lots of people surrounding it don't want it. And I think their opinions should have a higher weighting than the opinions of people who are allowed to walk away, who don't have to suffer the consequences. And that's okay. Thank you. 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 So we are still going through the buying of the property. If this stuff is happening now, already, and the, 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 the cafe are not ser serving alcohol now, what is the difference if they serve alcohol to a, 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 an event? We go to many events, and I have been to events at, um, around the area, and usually when there are events, it is well controlled. There is alcohol. There are the, the, the staff are good with licensing and um, age, etc. And I think that if there is things going on, if it is controlled, why would it make any difference to what is happening already at this time now? <coughs> if I had any fear, I would not be buying the closest property to the source right at this very moment and I have absolutely no doubt that the staff and the, the, the actual business will control it to their best ability. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to speak? Any, any other members of the public would like to speak? Okay, thank so, you. Chair, can I ask a question of the first person who spoke? We'll do, well, we'll do all any questions after after we will take we'll stay in the order we're in. Councillor Reed, that's okay. okay. <coughs> right, so we'd like to speak to invite of interest of course. Thank you. Right, thank you. Good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Nicola Pap Nicola and I am the managing director of Papuccinos Limited. Papuccinos currently operate the following venues in the Sea Haven area. The Galley at New Haven Seaford Sailing Club, the Martello Kiosk on the Esplanade, the Gateway Cafe in the Big Park, Peace Haven, and the Salts Cafe. We also operate catering events, functions, and mobile catering unions. Two of these venues are licensed. The Galley is one, and the Gateway, also in a park setting next to a children's play area, is the other. We have operated the Galley for three years and the gateway for seven and a half years and have just signed a renewed 10 year lease there with Peacehaven Town Council who have been more than happy with the way we have operated our license at the Gateway Cafe. I have personally held a license for over 20 years and in all this time I have had absolutely zero issues regarding licensable activity or alcohol related problems. Having these licences and operating them considerably in a conscientious manner has helped us sustain the viability of these businesses by being able to provide a little extra choice as well as function facilities in venues that are away from the main town centre areas and therefore generally have lower footfall, especially during the winter months. This has in turn helped Papaginos to become a successful operation employing over 60 plus members of staff in the winter months who all live in the local community. In the summer months, we have 70 plus staff. However, the Salt Cafe is currently our lowest performing venue 
and having the ability to offer customers a glass of wine or beer with their food, as well as hire out the premises for wakes, baby showers, civic ceremonies, birthday parties and naming ceremonies, etc., will greatly allow us to expand the business during daytimes. The Salts Recreation Ground has two licensed premises already, one being the Rugby Club and the other being the Cricket Club. I want to make it clear to anyone with concerns that under no circumstances do we want to operate as a pub, bar, nightclub, rave venue or late night music venue. This simply is not how we run our businesses. We just want to provide a little more choice for our customers and also to provide enhanced facilities for the local community. We do not want our staff working late evenings and our general opening hours will remain the same. So hopefully this will put to sleep the concerns of residents living in the local area. We do not want to jeopardise our business or our reputation by operating in the way some commentators have suggested in the local social media notice boards, i.e. by serving alcohol to children and holding raves. Neither do I expect special treatment for being a district councillor. In fact, I've received much personal abuse and even accusations of bribery for this on these notice boards especially after one particular comment that as I am a district councillor, it's pointless objecting as, and I quote, she knows her way around the system, which is quite shameful really, because I don't, and I do not use my councillor role to get with my businesses. I had a lot of my businesses before I was a councillor. I will close my statement by saying that we are experienced operators and if the change to the lease terms are agreed and Lewis District Council approve the licence, we will absolutely operate any licence activities with full consideration to the location and local residents. If we did not adhere to our licence, we would you know, be up against licensing and we would not want to risk having any of our licences revoked. So, um, thank you very much for listening to me and giving me the chance to explain how we would run the business. Thank you. Thank you. you. Councillors, do you have any questions to the interested parties? Right, um, Councillor Reeves. Can I uh, ask a question of the first person who spoke and also the proprietor? Is it possible? Possible? The first lady who spoke. Uh, what concerned me was you know, so you've um, talked about people urinating in your garden. You talked about noise and the general the general troubles there. Um, is that something you're concerned about? Or something that's happening already? Because if, if, it's, if it's something that's happening already, then as we are the, the owners of the salts, then we should be told about this and should be responding to that already. If that's the problem, we should know. I don't know if we've had reports of that on the basis we should investigate it. We take one at a time, or...? Um, okay, let's stop there then. I suggest we stop there, Chair, and ask them, do you want to make any further comments at all? It, it, was, some, it was feedback from some of the neighbours that that was happening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we need we'll take that to report that and take action about that. That is clearly mm -hmm. that's significant. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to ask something on that? Yes. Because I'm sure if anybody's seen how we have worked on the sorts in the last two years, we've barricaded the sorts cafe in the evening because we were having children drinking alcohol outside on the terrace and we've put shutters to keep the children from drinking. We have to go and pick up the broken glass bottles and clear the mess after you know children have been down there drinking. That isn't because we are supplying alcohol to anybody currently, so you know, we're having to deal with these issues and we have barricaded the sorts in the evenings to sort of help prevent the drugs and alcohol going on down in the park. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. That's clearly something we need to be addressing going forward, whatever happens with this particular, particular application. A question now about the actual use of the sorts cafe. My understanding it was not designed with the intention of being a music venue. 
And uh, what's been suggested is that in the summer, when it's warm, windows and doors will be open, therefore noise will inevitably flow out of that facility, whatever <coughs> level it's at. Now, I've, seen, I've also had a suggestion in some other venues, there is a volume control set for the PA system that actually is connected to the mains power supply. So after an, again, a great power volume has gone above, everything cuts, which is clearly a significant effect on bringing volumes there. So I think one question is, how would the venue cope with the kind of volumes you're thinking about for recording music? And two, would you consider having some uh, technical solution to reduce volume levels across the songs? Um, I don't have any intention of having loud music played in the premises at all. If you visited the galley or the gateway, where you, you would see that people are enjoying a lunch with a glass of wine, with friends. People have made friends by us having the gateway. We have a group of dog walkers, a huge group now, didn't know each other. They come regularly for a glass of wine, something to do. do not play loud music. We do not want to have. And, you know, an event where there's loud, blaring music, that's not what we do. We encourage people to come and have a nice lunch, a meal, you know, and if it's a christening or a wake or something, that isn't going to have loud music. I do not want any loud music events at all. This is, you know, just to help us improve our business by you know, having something extra for people to come there too, which they do at the Gally and Gateway. So, and then, very, a lot of them are the same customers because we've got the different businesses. They come and enjoy both. A walk and a, a meal and a glass of wine. We don't want that loud music. Thank you, Chair. And you, uh, Councillor Brown. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've three questions. Um, in section 2 on F, you talk about the supervisor doing risk assessments. Can you tell me what training that the supervisor is going to have to do that particular role? So our managers and supervisors, uh, one of my managers is here this evening, Abby, and she manages the galley. So all businesses have to have a health and safety risk assessment, a DPS on duty if there is anything going on with um, alcohol. So there will always be a DPS on duty that will be trained. It's challenge 25, so anybody that is <coughs> under 25 has to you know, have actual valid, um, you know, driving licence, passport, okay. you can't be photographed or anything. So, you know, all my staff at the Galley and Gateway are trained on this and um, they will be at the source too if this goes ahead. Okay. Uh, my second question is that the, um, the source is a quite dark area um, and there's very poor lighting. What sort of measure can you take for people at evening maybe at 10 o'clock and had a couple of drinks? And it's very, very dark. It's probably not your responsibility, but... Well, it is, but yeah. we don't want anything going on that day. We've already said that the, it, we won't be changing our current opening times unless there's a specific, you know, birthday party or something. But they're going to be very few and far between. So, yeah. And they wouldn't be 18th or 21st birthday parties. It's not the business we're in. I mean, I work the evenings. If we do have evenings, on, which we do at the galley, and yeah, down there I wouldn't want to be working in the dark, so yeah. Right, um, as well as the council, I'm chairman of Seaford and Bishopstone Neighbourhood Watch Association, and we receive regular reports <coughs> from the police about drug taking on the source. Now, that's not your responsibility, but at the same time, if people are taking drugs down there, you, you're storing alcohol in, in the cafe, I consider that to be quite a high risk. So how are you going to mitigate that? Well, so we don't want to operate late evenings. We don't want, you know, a pub, bar, club. We want to be closing by 7 p.m. I don't want my staff in the sort of late evenings, dark evenings. Um, yes, so that, you know, the, the, the teenagers that are going down, they go down about 10, 11, we have CCTV at the Salts, this is why we barricaded the Salts, because it, it was just awful what we were finding, and, you know, there are many sleepless nights about what goes on down there, but that, they aren't customers that we would serve anyhow. They're not going to want to be served, because they're not going to want to buy a drink, they're bringing it into the park. I think you might have misinterpreted my question. My question was actually how you can stop 
people who've been taking drugs and breaking in and stealing alcohol to sell to buy more drugs? Well, the, the premises is very secure and we have CCTV. Um, so, you know, we've made those measures with putting the shutters across it in the evenings. As soon as we close, the shutters are there. It's padlocked and we've got CCTV. I'm a bit confused because one side you're saying you're just going to run events, no. then you're going to sell alcohol to people that come in and have a meal. You ask, you're asking, you're saying you're not going to pay music, but you're asking for a music license. You're going to operate from nine o'clock in the morning to twelve o'clock at night. I'm really confused because there is no clear. Uh, specs, we don't really, even the report doesn't really lay out exactly. Are you just running a bed? So are you from 9 to 12? I mean, I, I, I mean could you clarify yes, exactly so what it was? With the police and with licensing, you have to have that license covered, but you don't have to operate those hours. But the license has to state that for the licensing. So that's out of our reading. So maybe people are reading into that and thinking we're going to be serving alcohol from 9 a.m. till midnight, which we definitely are not going to do. So, and it's if we're asked to put on an event because we've got the room downstairs on the bottom level of the stalks, we can section that off and have a birthday party in the day, a naming ceremony, a wake, which we do at our other buildings. We section off. So these are all daytime events running alongside our current business. But if people want to come in and have a beer or a wine with their lunch, jug of pims in the summer or on the terrace outside, that's what we promote. If you come into the galley or the gateway, you'll see that. We do not, you know, do late nights with loud music. So you're going to shut at 7 o'clock? Yes, we are. And what about this music? You're saying you're not going to be playing music, but you're applying for a music license. It's just background music that all, yeah. Yeah, you have to have the license to go hand in hand with that. Right. We're not going to do loud music at all. So, I mean, I, you know, I don't know if any of you have come into any of the other premises that we have, but we've always got sort of music playing. It's not loud, it's not blaring out. We don't have music outside blaring out. The gateway on our, the way we've run the business successfully is to sign a 10 year lease now, and we've had the business seven and a half years. He's saying town council, if ever we've done anything out of our remit with what we signed up to do there, which we've made the business so successful, you know, with what we've done there, that's what we want to do at the salt, to make it such a warm, welcoming environment. Thank you. Just one other thing is that the hasn't been slightly been mentioned. In our report, proposals from yourselves, yeah. you want security. You want a designated premises supervisor and a minimum of two SIA registered door staff. That indicates that you are expecting trouble. <laughs> if you've ever visited, the shore now has closed down. It was a pub in, in the town near Morrison's. I went there one night with some friends from London on a Saturday night. They were supposed to have over 21s. No way was any of the youngsters in that pub over 21. They were all underage but they were dressed to the nines with fake ID. You are telling me that you're not going to be able to even monitor, and you, but you want this all this security. Yeah. It looks like you want to run this as a nightclub. <laughs> the police have stated that has to be documented. It has to be for any business applying for a, a liquor license, an alcohol license. That has to be stipulated, but that's not the way we run our business. We're already here in Seaford at the gallery. We hope to close later, then 7 or 8 p.m. in the summer months. We're at the gateway the same, and it will be the same at the sort. I do not, do not want to jeopardise the reputation of our business for having that. Yes, and the designated premises supervisor has to be there if there's alcohol sold. But that is a member of staff that is trained. We currently have a manager at the source that will be trained. We have a manager at the gate that's already trained, a manager at Gateway that are DPSs. That just has to be covered. And if the police have stipulated you have to put, you would have door staff. But we don't want to. Yeah, after a risk assessment. If we were going, but we're not going to be doing those events. It's not.
how we run our business. We would already be doing them in our other businesses, and that's not what we want to do. In the big park in Peace Haven, it's a huge area. I know, you know, I know, I know, I know the park. Running I just feel that it is sort of sailing club, and, uh, sorry, the sailing club at the other end, and your big park in Peace Haven are completely different. Exactly, so I would be doing raids in the big park where there's, you know, vast amounts of land that you could do that, but I don't want to do that. That's not what we're in for, for attracting lots of young people, lots of drinking, and having to pick up the pieces to open the next morning, that's not what I want to do. Oh, okay, thank you, Madam Mayor, thank you. Yes, sorry, can I just say that every licensed premises everywhere in the whole country has to have a DPS, oh. it has to, so it's just things that, you know. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, thank you. Um, Nicola. Sorry. Nicola. Sorry. When you took on the lease for the cafe, you, it was very clear the lease of what you could and couldn't mm -hmm. um, do in there. You applied for an alcohol license, but it was residents that informed the town council. Why didn't you approach the town council asking whether we would allow you to change it rather than doing that a resident said informing us? Yeah. So I can answer that because when we took this, when we were looking around to sort of see what we could do, Tony Jackson was there. I have got emails I can send you um, saying that it would be a good idea to change the premises used to have a license, and we were told this was going to be put to council to change the premises license to alcohol because you can see that. You know, with the gateway, how it ran at the time, with the galley, the sorts could be running the same. So it wasn't that I ignored that. So sorry if it came across like that. I've sent letters of emails of apology about that, but I have got the email trails to say, has this gone to council yet? Because with lockdown, you know, everything got lost in the system. So we couldn't operate only takeaway for a year. And then it was literally table service, and then it was takeaway again. So I had meetings with Ellie Bullock and Tony regarding this, and it was already spoken about previously. So I have got the emails of that. So it wasn't that, you know, I don't want you to think I'm disrespectful and just run away and did this myself. I didn't. This had already been spoken about for about way for way over a year. And um, you know, John was with me and Abby at the time when we were looking at the source, and this was discussed with Tony and Debbie. So it wasn't something that I just thought, oh, I'm going to do that and take advantage of it. This was us being approached and spoken to about this. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Definitely, but that has to 
in with how the manager deals with things. You can't be serving drunk people because you're going to get your license revoked. You can't be serving people that are too much under the influence of alcohol because that's not good. That's the name of business. It's the law, it's licensing law. So, you know, you cannot be serving somebody that's drunk or, you know, has the effects of being too drunk. So that's about good management and, you know, controlling what goes on because somebody could come in that's already been in a local bar, they could have been in a rugby club drinking all afternoon and come in and cause a nuisance. But that's how you have to control situations. Yes. Councillor Edison. Oh, sorry, Councillor Edison. Yeah, it's okay. It's just what it doesn't say at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you say wakes and baby showers, mm -hmm. and then I read glasses, and empty glasses and bottles from outdoor seating, and any broken glass. I mean, we have a children's playground right next door. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I say, it's what it, it, what it doesn't say. And I would have thought that if you were adjusted your alcohol license, to a lower time, then you could have understood it when you refer to wakes and baby showers mm -hmm. and things like that. Whereas if you want a, a liquor license at 12 o'clock at night, it, it would seem that, that you want to run it as, as a... And it, it, it's but we it, don't it's want the liquor license at 12 o'clock, it's just that has to stay that with the license. We can't control what a license you know, it states that you have to have the midnight, but we're not going to operate until midnight. But could you not apply it for a licence for, you know, a shorter time, say nine o'clock? We're, we're going to close earlier, but the licence yeah. has to state that, but we're not going to operate until midnight. But we could have conditions. If you want, yeah, Monday, we can ask for conditions on that. But, so you can ask for conditions. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, but honestly, if you see our other don't operate till midnight, I can assure you that. That's all I can point out. It's yeah. what the report doesn't say that I'm more worried about. Yes, like, and we don't want off license, so we don't want people no, no. taking bottles and things away. These the, the crockery and glasses are on our premises already. Yeah. Um, yeah, which and bear in mind, if there were broken glasses, a lot of the time that you operate is going to be in the dark hours. We're not going to operate in dark hours, no. As I said, I don't want my staff working late evenings in the dark. That's not what we do. Right. Yes. So, I mean, the latest we go on is sailing evenings at the sailing club, and that's the members, and that's like 8.30 on a Wednesday evening when they well, sail. That's that's what troubles me. Yes, yes. It's it has to be a change yes. from what the sort was intending to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, because there are things that <coughs> yeah. But we're happy to work alongside so. and have the stipulates we close at that time, because, you know, we we have to have that midnight thing that the licence yeah. says now, but then that makes us look like, oh gosh, you want to run late night events and loud music, but we don't. Well, of course, it's also um, about security. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm, I just can't see a point where you need security. No. If you were having things like family weights or baby showers. Exactly, they're in the they're day. Are, they're, they're, you know what I mean? It's, yes, uh, yeah. uh, if there's two hefty fellas standing outside at late nine o'clock, ten o'clock at night, <coughs> there's no baby shower going on. Yeah, that's why we have a risk assessment in place and, you know, that's not what we're in the business to do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify something for councillors regarding the times of the licence. I'm on licensing at this street. When someone applies for a licence, they will apply for the times they want to. So it will be the latest time they ever want to open. So, whereas Nicola's saying I had to do midnight, no she didn't. She could have put 9 o'clock would be the last time she would sell a drink. Mm -hmm. Because all the pubs and seats that are down in the district all have different opening times and closing times. On, if you look at their license, some will say they've got to serve their last drink at 11 o'clock, some say 1 o'clock. It's whatever the applicant has applied for. So it could have been 9 o'clock she wrote. It does mean that occasionally if she wanted to stay open until midnight, she could. She might say she's only going to open until 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock, but the midnight one she could because it's on 
the lights that are less obviously at least changes and things. But it's the applicant that applies for the specific times they want to. So I'm just sorry, I had to clarify yeah, sorry, that. I've had a phone call from licensing. I've had two actually, one from the police and one from licensing, and they both said it had to say that, so maybe they need to read up a bit more on what they're advising us. Yeah, if you're missing the yeah. end about that, we were. It's different, you can have different times and different days as yeah, well. Yeah, so we're perfectly happy to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chair, I'd like to ask a question that came from the a proposal that came from the operator and is in the report at uh, page 13, um, 2.19, alcohol provided on a cafe basis rather than a pub or bar. Alcohol provided only by a table service, not from a bar area. And just to pursue Councillor Hyder's point a bit further. Does this mean that alcohol will only be served if food is being served? Or does it simply mean that you can bring drinks to a table where no food is being served? I think we would all feel safer if it said food, alcohol is served with food, full stop, and there's no opportunity then for people walking or outside. And I assume that that's why you probably want food to mean a meal, not this thing. Yeah, uh, yes, um, um, it's the sort of the cafe, I've noticed that the toilet facilities there are a bit limited. And um, at night time, the sorts of toilets would be locked. And when people have had a drink, you've got to go, you've got to go. So I'm a bit worried about excess human pollution down on the sort of It's the same with the rugby club and cricket club. If they're serving alcohol, where the people go, I mean, this is going to be another business that we're not going to be operating as late as the rugby club or um, cricket club when they've got functions on. And, you know, they are places where people, especially rugby club, it, it's renowned for people going to drink and celebrate, but that's not what we want, you know, to be running. We, we won't be there they to be toilet facilities to facilitate all the time people. But we've got toilets in the sort not, of not enough for a car so. We're not going to be doing that in the evening. So your license says you will. Your license, the license says you will operate until 12. It also says you're going to be doing 10 hours. We've just said we're not going to. So that's no, not we're not doing 10 hours. That's not very long. Could you speak to the chair, please? Could you speak to the floor, please? Yeah. So we have toilets in the salts. We're not going to be doing off-license. We don't want a license to do off-license. You know, that's not what we want to provide. So, you know, and we're not going to be there they <coughs> You know, there is, as I said, there's already the rugby club there, and there's already the cricket club. So, I don't know what time the sorts of toilets are closing in the park. Yeah, they used to got sort of um, toilets. Yeah, so they do have some toilets. They do have some toilets. Yeah, but you know, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. But we're not going to be running a pub club or whatever, so I don't see that the football is going to be much more than running a cafe. Yeah, exactly. Coffee, people need a toilet for a coffee. And children need a toilet when they're in the park playing. Yeah, I don't know. Any other councillors or any councillors want to ask further questions to the interested parties? I've been in the sort since you've refurbished it. I, was, I thought there was only one toilet. There is. So if you're having a function, and there's like 30 people there. Are there there is two toilets there. There's two toilets. Yes, there is. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Councillor, did you want to join? No, me? I can't. I was at Town Hall because of the interest with Nico. All right. Oh, okay. If we just say completely separate oh. from all this, book, which is very. Sorry, is he commenting? It's a question. It's a question, it's also a statement. So, Chair, I just suggest that Councillor Lord might need to make a declaration of interest. I have not declared it, that's why I'm sitting over here, Councillor. Is that again? I have declared it, that's why I'm sitting over here. I am, I am unable to vote. So, Chair, I'm just making what he was near at the beginning when the yeah. declarations were made. Okay, declarations which I've declared in writing and in email as well, uh, thank you, Councillor. Also, the biggies. Sorry, for the Lord, Chair, if he's got a declaration of interest, he cannot yes. comment on 
I'm not, not application. I'm not comments on this application. Thank you. you can't speak. I don't want to use it. I'm point of order, you can you can't follow. I, I, I can vote, but what I'm able to, what I'm able to say as a member of the public, as I am now, as I'm not sitting with the council, and I've declared my declarations through the town council club. I said the biggest cock up the town council ever made, not for you, uh, town club, is the previous administration. When they allowed on the sauce a musical party, they went on from noon till midnight, and all the neighbours around there was so loud. I was there because I was part of the road trip, not the council. And people were so annoyed. And I can understand exactly where they're coming from because if I live within half a mile of the south at the time. Um, the noise was so intense, and the vibration was so noisy, there was so much mess and untidiness. And the town council at the time allowed this to go ahead. <coughs> and I, I think what we're talking about now is a small bird on the park. And I think we should take these in, into consideration with regards to the fact that it's not raised every night, it's not passed every night, it is basically a place where we start from. I don't want things to be blown into the whole proportion. What Secret Town Council did about before the pandemic, the four or five years ago, um, the one of the previous town about was absolutely outrageous. I just think we can just rein things in a bit and think what we're going to do. We want this the town to be prosperous, successful, and all the place. I think this has got nothing to do with what we're talking about, really. Okay. Yes. I really don't think so. I, I think, think this case that we're trying to, to think about. No, I think I, I'm not going to dispute it. But I said, we want. We keep talking about localism. We keep talking about local businesses. We talk about employing local people. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Right, any further questions to the interested parties? Right, then I'm going to now reinstate standing order 3E. So please can have a proposer, Councillor Payne, and a seconder, Councillor Edison, all in favour. Thank you, Chair. Right, so, <coughs> Councillor Hannah. Um, um, to be honest, I don't think we've got enough detail to be able to say yes or no. Because we've got a license that says it's 11, we've got the owner saying this is going to do it until 7 or 9. I think we need a full proposal of what she wants to do. In detail, and then we'll be able to make a decision. Right, so that's what we're going to do. Right, right. Thank you, Chair. 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 As the report tries to make clear, there are two decisions in the lifetime of what Pacino's wish to do to consider. There's the licensing decision, which is the Lewis District Council Licensing Committee. We are not a licensing committee. That is not what we are being asked to consider as a council. We are simply being asked to, to, to give or not give permission to requested changes to their arrangements that they are making. Now again, as the, and so as, as the reports, so basically what that means, and as the motion say, really, so for example, number three, consider the opening hours and initial activities agreed by the town council. So there it is, motion three. So that's saying to councillors, the council can determine which hours they wish these things to happen or not happen. So as the, the, the motions are in the order that they're in, the motion two is about would you give permission for the changes they want to make? Effectively, yes or no. To any or all, that could be all of them, none of them, or some of them. And again, that's a matter for council to determine this evening. 
Then the third notion, having done that, if you were to say yes under notion two and the notion three, you might consider whether you want to put any more restrictive hours upon them or not. And that as a landowner, a leaseholder, we have the power to do. And that is why you have motion two, and that is why you have motion three. And hence you have motion four, which is to say is that once the council has determined what their wish is with regards to these requests from Cappuccino, as item four says, then a, a, a change, if, they, if any change is agreed by council, it then would have to be reflected in the, in the agreement with Cappuccino's to rent the premises. So that's motion four, instructing the officers to make the necessary changes to the premises agreement. So that's what we've been asked to do as councillors this evening. Consider, do you want to give permission to any of these at all? Yes, no. And if, but if you do, do you want to make any further restrictions upon them that will be reflected in your third motion? Does that help to clarify things for you? Sort of. Sort of. What kind of clarification do you like? Well, you know, uh, Nicholas, we decided that she was right to accept it. But in three in three point four, she says uh, my June July to September to nine. Three point four is the current agreement for the premises council. Yeah. Yes. So that's us. So. But so if the current agreement is up to nine, so what's up to seven? She's reducing her hours. Well, that that's. That, if you like, that's a matter for that's something that matter for them. But let's say as council, that's the reason. The reason the reason why the report is set out the way that it is, three is there, is the councils need to understand what are they changing if they make any changes. So so the report summarises what the current arrangements. You know, so section three of the report tells you what changes have been made to the current arrangements to agree to the changes. And so, for example, you might consider opening hours. You might go, so therefore you need to know what the current opening hours are, decide if you want to make any changes to them or not. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. So, simple, so as I say, so that's how we set the report. So that's where you've got the notions that you have. Then, as I say, the proposals and opportunities are summarised in, in section two. The current premises agreement and the changes that would be needed if you agree to their proposals in section three. And then section four, as you can see, um, Chair, so do you mind if yeah. we can just, can I be heard? Is that okay? Yes, sorry. Can you? Thank you. Um, section four is the public consultation results, and it might be worth just highlighting that now. Um, we had a lot of response to this consultation. Great to see the level of public engagement. Um, and, as a, and as it shows here, we've been through the responses, because obviously there were some duplicates. So they have been removed, if you like, from consideration. And that leaves 49 separate responses that can be definitely identified as separate responses, 22 in favour and 27 objecting. And as you see below, the key points made in favour or against amongst those 49 responses are set out for you again within the report. So I just wanted to sort of take the opportunity to clarify some of the points within the report and completely understand the questions asked this evening. And again, how to further clarify any points at all. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, oh sorry, Councillor Gorman's first year. Sorry, thank you. I've had numerous emails um, on this application. One was from a resident who has allowed me to speak a little to about her. She was raised by two alcoholic parents. It had massive effects on her growing up and into adulthood with both her health and her well-being, her mental health, and had the, so the really bad effects. She's finally picking herself up. She's now got a young child. But the one thing she does not want her child is to be around any form of alcohol, because she's seen the devastating effects it can have. Her very local park is the Salts. So if we allow this license where it might only be a glass of wine or beer with a meal, she doesn't even want that. Which means then she's got no local park to take her young child. So she's really as asked that we object to this just so that she's got somewhere to go and she won't be the only family that's in that's been in a situation. I understand and we support businesses. We want 
businesses to succeed, but we also have to look at this is a family friendly area. Last year, this council refused a pop up bar for six weekends on the seafront, and the reason for that was because the seafront is family friendly and shouldn't have alcohol. So, actually, I will not be supporting any changes to the lease, and I hope that you can support that as well. Thank you. Um, completely support what Councillor Borman has said. I feel the same exactly. I can't support this. I think the source is what it is. It's a, it's a recreational ground for families and it's very, very popular. I think if we add alcohol to it, I think we would notice the numbers de decreasing, especially with families that have problems with alcohol or, I mean, I was married to an alcoholic, so I, I've had experience of terrible, terrible times with alcohol. We do have a lot of alcohol-related incidences in the town. Um, um, we, we've got many restaurants that already sell alcohol in the town. We've got licensed uh, little pubs. Um, I just don't think we need to add something more to the salts. Also, one thing that hasn't been mentioned is the limited access for the emergency services. You know, there's no real access to get down there quickly if there was fires or accidents or anything. Um, and it does concern me from another perspective is that this licence will be up next year because we don't run long leases with the sorts or the martello. And this proprietor might be very responsible, but there's no guarantee who gets the tender back next year. I mean, there might be a completely different administration and this uh, licensee might not get the tender back. And the next person, if we change what the sorts stand for, or the cafe, the next person might not be as responsible. And, and that's another, that's what I'd like the, the members to consider, is that who will be taking it over for the next year. Okay, thank you. So public participation is finished on the road. Council Reeves, Council Brown. Yes, Chair, I'd like to make the general point that all of our green spaces are for all of the people living in the town. So I'm mindful that people living next to a green space, wherever they are across the town, are impacted by the use in ways that people living far away are not impacted. But I think the principle is still we are, as a town council, the custodians of all of our green spaces, and they're for, for the whole of the town. So we have to think about what we are doing as a council for the town while considering the uses made of salts and whether that's an old license for the rugby club or occasional licenses for the cricket club or for this salts cafe. But I also want a specific point in the report, page 16, 4.5a, uh, uh, one of the consultation responses was the proposed trial period. And I wonder whether that might be a good move here. But we say we might agree this for, say, six months. And then we show what's the old saying, proof of the pudding is in the eating. So all kinds of comments can be made, but we shall know, say, in six months, across the, across the summer, how things will actually be. Uh, Councillor Brown. Uh, yeah. uh, I'd like to put forward a proposition that we take items to A, B, C, and D and vote the individual on each other. Councillor uh, Thank you, Chair. Before we do that, <laughs> uh, I'd just like to say that um, I'm afraid I have to admit that uh, when I came to this meeting, uh, I did, or I unconsciously did what councillors are not supposed to do, which I kind of made a decision in my mind before the meeting, and we're told we're not supposed to do that. We are supposed to come here and hear the evidence and be impartial about it. So I came here and said to myself, well, I don't think this should happen because of many of the reasons that other councillors have said. It's a some salts, it's next to a bay area, it's a lot of these spaces. But having heard uh, for and against things, uh, I changed my mind somewhat. And um, I was going to suggest, uh, as Councillor Reid has suggested, that um, a trial period I think would be a very good idea. But I don't think actually six months is a very good idea, sorry, with, with respect, because I think a year's trial is the only way to do it, because then you'll know what it's like in winter and summer with different daylight hours. 
And as actually the lease is due in a year's time, it would seem very appropriate that we just trial it for the rest of this lease tenure, and then you can take stock at the end of that time. I think, uh, as Sam Clark has already said, you can put whatever stipulations you want as far as the opening house is concerned. I think it's been made very plain by Nicola that uh, what the licensing uh, said, as, as far as she understood it, thinking you have to be licensed to whatever licensing hours are. But as Council Bormann has said, maybe that is a mistake and you can restrict them in a certain way. Certainly the council can restrict them. I would say to Council Bormann, there's a very, very big difference between, uh, on both sides of the argument, between something on the beach and something in the source. Something on the, on the, on the beach is, in very public view, is an open area, it's not an enclosed space. Uh, and even though you could have people trying to police it, it's still a very visible alcoholic area on the beach, if you like. Uh, in the salts, I agree, it's a children's play area, it's a recreational space. But what you have to admit in the salts is, any kid can go along to Morrison's, buy a whole bag of booze aged 19, and bring it into the salts, and they do. And they drink it on the salts, and they leave it all over the salts. Surely it's far better to have alcohol served in a policed area on a restriction where it's just served to people who are sitting at table in an orderly fashion uh, inside a building where children, unless they go into the building, uh, don't see people drinking. But quite frankly, children see their parents drinking at home, probably, at, 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 you know, at the table or whatever, you know, in, at parties. This is something that's not on to all. So I'm going on with it, but I think it's important to draw the the, to draw the differences here. I uh, come around to the opinion, I would go, I would uh, suggest that we go for a trial period, perhaps with Councillor Brown's recommendation we take this thing separately, but I think you can't know what this is like unless you try it. And quite honestly, Peace Haven Council would be very pleased with the way it's gone on a similar green space area. Why would we not at least give it a trial on that basis? Um, what did you say? They, I think they've given a tenure yes. or something like that. Anyway, this is not somebody who's never done this before. It's this is an experienced patron who's done these things before, and I think we should give it a go, even though I've had my reservations, as I say. So um, that's what I would say. Thank you, Chair. Any councillors, any more councillors who would like to speak? So, Chair, if there's no one else to speak, I think I would like to feed back to the three of you, Chair, where I think we might be going with the motions in front of us and check that people are comfortable with this approach. Um, I think, so, 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 so in terms of motion two, I think that some councillors are uh, proposing an amendment to the motion two, which might be to consider giving permission, so I would say, for example, to consider giving permission for a one-year trial to the operators of the Salt Cafe to do and then the list below. Have I, have I heard that correctly in terms of the meeting? So, so that might be the motion that people want to propose. Um, and then I've also heard that the councillors well, might wish to take A, B, C, and D separately. Yes, that's that's true as well. So I guess that so I guess as, I guess through you, Chair. I might wonder whether we might take one and two now um, and ask councillors if there's a councillor, if all councillors who might want to propose what I've just said, if that makes sense, so that then that will be the votes that we start to take. Does everyone, I've got hands up, so you, Chair, through you, let's see what people want to do. Chair, yeah, I'd like to propose an amendment to what the Chair has suggested. He's gone, gone some of the way on the Okay, go on. My suggestion or my proposal is that two. 2B becomes to sell alcohol only for food served, and 2C to play recorded music inside the premises. Okay, so that sounds like the motion you're going to propose, Councillor. Yes. Okay. Chair, I think Councillor Nick wants to, did you want to make a additional uh, point as well? Thank you, Chair. Uh, quite frankly, I think we ought to just completely scrub 2D because it completely contradicts what Nicola herself said she wants to do. So I don't I can't understand why that's there. Late night, late night to me is not seven o'clock or even nine o'clock. Late night is eleven o'clock. Uh, so I think that is invalid as a as an article to start with. Well, I think that's okay. So why don't we? So so listen to my count. This is great, very helpful council as we work together to form, work towards the motions we want to consider entirely as it should be. Um, so I think what I'm asking councillors to do is to 
propose, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe do number one to get it out of the way and then we'll be in confusion. Um, and then number two, um, someone might want to propose 2A but with the restriction, with the, with the, with, as a trial. And then up to B with the formal words that's just been shared with us, again as a trial. And to C with the formal words that's just been shared with us as a trial. And then we'll see counselling if anyone wants to propose 2D. And if no one proposes it, then it won't be part of the motion anymore, if that makes sense. So we'll take, we'll take our A, Bs and Cs effectively as separate motions and see if, who would like to propose and second and the vote on those. And then we'll see counselling if no one proposes 2D, then it won't be considered by the meeting at all. When you've done all of that, I think we'll take a breath. And then we'll see subsequently, in the light of what you've done under one and two, we'll have to see what to do about three and four, if that makes sense. So we'll return to three and four once you determine one and two, because they'll only be found valid on your you after one and two. How am I doing so far, council, in terms of setting up what you're meant to do? So through you, Chair, maybe someone should propose number one to get us started. Okay, so number one is to note the report and consider any further comments and feedback from councillors. Councillor Payne, Councillor Borman, all in favour? That's everyone, Chair, thank you. Right, <coughs> number two, to consider giving permission to the operator of the Salts Cafe to, oh, first one. Sorry, you missed out the trial period, Chair. Oh, sorry. <coughs> I was going to say it, okay. So to, so, yeah, so to, give it, to consider giving permission for a one year trial period to the operator of the Salts Cafe to. Hold functions. Okay, so I'm going to we propose that. Proposer. Does everyone with us here that fair council needs to propose that? A seconder. Anyone want to second them having functions? Is this for the trial period? Yes, this is for the yeah. trial period. Six months. So we now, we've initially said for a year, so now yeah. you're changing it to six months. Yeah, we're that one on first meeting. Was anyone seconding the year? Well, I'll second the year. Okay, second one year. year. One year. One year. Because it's the end of their... Okay, so, yeah. so should, we, should we have a vote on that first and then we'll, we'll see what you do? Okay, so this is functions for one year as a trial period. So That's just functions. Yeah, so we've had it. Proposer, second, so chair, what's the case of that? Yeah, can we have a proposer? We've had a proposer, sorry. Um, all in favour? Okay, one, two, three, four, in, that's four in favour. That's four in favour. Against? One, two, three, four, five against. And abstains. And Okay, so that, that one falls. So do we want to do it again without the year's trial? No, we, I think let's do year trial for all of them, I think, because okay. that'll be quick. Right. So now that we consider giving permission to the office of one year trial for the Sorts Cafe to sell alcohol. Only with food. Only with food. Sorry, only with food. Only food. Uh, can we have a proposer? Three, okay. seconder, okay. and all in favour? We've got four in favour of that. Against. And against. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's eight against this time. Any abstentions? No one's abstained. Okay. Right, so again, to consider giving permission to the operators for a one year trial to play recorded music. Okay, so the recorded music inside the building. Oh, in the premises, I keep forgetting to make sure. Inside the building. In the premises. Yeah. Proposers. And seconder. Thank you. Very All in favour? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got seven in favour of that. Against? I've got Three against them. And then abstentions. One abstention. Alright, so 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 that's so one stands, two C as amended stands. Um, does anyone want to propose two D? No. What was the proposal for two D? Late professionals. What to have it or yeah, to have it. No. Can I tell you step chair that two D would be um, controlled by number three in terms of the opening hours. Potentially, we have, if we get that far, counts we do. If it has to pass that. Yes. <laughs> so, do we have a proposal for the trial period on the late night refreshments? No. No? 
Okay, okay so that one, that one stands as well. So, so, so we, the, the bit we pass is playing recorded music with this analysis. Um, so, do, does any councillor wish to make any further proposals, or do we need to make any restrictions, for example, upon the ability to put, this would simply be about when to pay music from any further restrictions, i.e. Uh, motions three and four. The last question then. Um, yes, Councillor At the moment, we say nine to nine. So if we don't change them, we, we say recording music from nine to nine, yeah? I'm going to say yes to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, 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 yeah, that's, 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 yeah. For us, yeah, it's, it's, hey, the licensing, Lewis licensing, yeah, yeah. but you yeah, know, in terms of us as landlords, that, yeah. landowners, that's our decision. Okay, so I think we don't need to do number three, I think, is what I'm saying. Or we can sit there, but we don't go to do anything else. Um, and, and does someone not want to. So, excuse me, what's in the Does someone want to. Obviously, we need to just go away and make their say agreements to uh, change their agreement around music. So, that requires motion four. So, would someone like to propose for you, Chair? Would someone like to propose motion four? Councillor Keats. And a seconder. Councillor Payne, seconder. Councillor Payne, all in favour? Instruct us to do what we just asked to do. Thank you. That's, that's, that's about eight, so I'll take that as, as carried. Thank you, Chair. That's it. Thank you. So, can I ask questions on the buttons? Okay. 5.6, which says that the answer will be recorded to the licensing committee. But the first time, as soon as we can now say no to their answer, does that make their point? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, think we'll, I think we'll just do what we said and then yeah. we'll see where that takes us. Okay. Thank you very much.